Chefs, lift your first mystery ingredient. Lean red meat. By the size of it, I'm guessing venison. This is five minute mayhem, where our chefs are giving a new ingredient every five minutes. What they do with it is completely up to them. I'm gonna rush you boys, because your five minutes starts now. This could go so many different ways. Uh, so we could do a tartar spice with a little bit of cumin with a hung yogurt, beautiful from the Middle East. Or we could uh, beautifully marinate it, season it, uh, sear it, dress it with soy, do a tataki. While you're talking, Ebbers is cooking. I'm just picking an ingredient that I can add flavours to when we know what else comes. But also, if nothing else comes, which is not the format, uh, <laughs> kind, of would also, <laughs> kind of would also work. I.e. venison would love sort of woodland, earthy kind of flavours and cauliflower is going to help me with that with some herbs. Oh, I'm going to do some sweet caramelised onions because they go with everything. Do they? Is there a danger here in these first five minutes you could do too much? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going neutral oil. Neutral as in it could go anywhere in the world. But if I've got a lovely caramelised onion base. Interesting. I could puree it, put it into a sauce, make a jus. I'm also going to start some polenta. I'm going to make a really rich polenta base with some cream. Oh, damn you. I saw polenta as the grain on the back as a really versatile option and exactly. I've stolen it. Yeah. I think a normal home cook in this situation would just start cooking the venison. <laughs> They're doing the opposite. <laughs> oh, there's an avocado here. That's fantastic. Why? Why? Because it goes with... Venison? It could be. Venison tartare with a little avocado crema, tacos, okay, okay. barbacoa. Okay. Yeah. Oh, pomegranate molasses, that's nice. I might, I'll make a sauce. You are, do you know what? What's interesting is you hear pomegranate and your mind goes to one kind of family of ingredients and so far Kush has picked up three of them and I don't want to copy. What, what are you doing so far, Ben? I can't really see from over here. I've got some butter in a pan, some garlic, some cauliflower. I'm going to add some hard herbs like Rosemary. Okay. So you're getting relatively delicate on flavours at the moment? Yes. But a little bit of brown butter, get some colour on the cauliflower so it's more than just boiled cauliflower. 50 seconds left of your first five minutes. I'm going to do a little apple soy and miso sauce with a bit of fish sauce in it. I don't know what you're trying to make yet. I don't know, but if I've got loads of flavour bases, I can go anywhere. Ed, reveal the next ingredient. Oh. oh! That is really mean when we haven't got running water what? here because we can't put soil in the kitchen. <laughs> no, not in this kitchen. Mud must go out. <laughs> Contamination. So while these two are the chefs now film. go to go what and clean them. What a silly thing to do. Then <laughs> what's just been revealed to the chefs is salsa fee, a root vegetable that when delivered is terribly dirty. So I could you better currently clean them in the other kitchen where we have running water. I've done my wood. <laughs> Soil free. So straight away, you both are familiar with salsify, yeah? Yes. Yep. Salsify. What, 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 what is it? Explain to us. Salsify. It's a root vegetable mm -hmm. that's very pale underneath. It discolours really quickly. So good to get it into acidulated water if you're not using it immediately. I mean, we don't have much time, so we'll it, be using it fairly is quickly. Is there anything it cooks like? Uh, parsnip. Parsnipy, parsnip, okay. but it's far better, Ooh. I think. The reason we ran out of the kitchen is you really don't want cross-contamination in the kitchen and soil is one of the worst of that, which is why you always wash veggies and something that is as soily as salsify shouldn't really be around ingredients that are already cooked. Just before we lifted the cloche on that, I did put some stock on uh, as well. So has the salsify taken you off track at all for what you originally planned? No, mm -hmm. still feeling very um, weirdly autumnal given yeah. the time of year. Yeah. I've steamed some mushrooms on the back here which another earthy kind of what goes together grows nice. together. And now I'm going to start thinking about my venison in the next five minutes, ready to start for the last 10 to 15 to give cooking and resting time. Oh, I'm making a uh, red wine and apple cider vinegar gastrique with some sweated out onion. Uh, I'm, I'm poaching or slash boiling the salsify in apple juice. I'll let that caramelise right down, add butter and then roast it in there. And then this little soy and miso chili concoction. At the moment, I don't need, but we'll finish it. I'll put it in a bottle, back pocket, take okay. it home. <laughs> okay, right. And then the polenta is cooked, but I don't know where it's going to go. Okay. Can we have the next ingredient, please? Nope, you've still got a minute and a half left. Chefs, 
Worst case scenario, ingredient next. What don't you want? Fish. Tofu. Your answers are not influencing what's coming out next. This is all pre decided. Right, I've gone heavily peppered piece of venison. Five, four, three, two, and one. Lift the cloche. Kush next to Oh, for goodness yes. sake. Oh, <laughs> you absolute. Why would, there's nowhere in hell that you would ever put two, a premium protein like venison with tofu. Why would you do that? Because the normals are in control. <laughs> I have to go Far East. Okay. What am I doing with polenta in the Far East? I don't know. I'll take the polenta if you want, chef. We'll do a little sherry sherry. Why, what have you got? I'm still going woodland. I don't know what I'm going to do with the tofu yet. <laughs> oh, yes. The tofu is going to go into my pre-warmed miso soy concoction. Ooh, Cook that right down and make it jammy. Bad. I didn't say I wanted to get rid of the polenta. It's just helping you out. <laughs> just, just helping you out, mate. I'm going to cook this tofu in uh, the honey, soy, chilli, miso. Cook it right down until it's jammy and sticky and then cool it down. Maybe they can go as little like uh, tofu barbecue nuggets. Okay, nice. Just found on the back here a little bit of horseradish, which will go wonderfully with my cauliflower because I'm sticking to this kind of woodland autumnal vibe. I've got a funny feeling this next ingredient, one of you, it's going to make one of you a lot happier than the other. So that's partially cooked. But to speed it up, I'm going to portion it into the end results and carry on cooking it. Hey, but what are you hoping for next? Do you know, a flavouring, a condiment of some sort. So maybe like a, a special mustard or a... Uh, I really don't want chilli. Because this kind of flavour profile doesn't want chilli. I've gone with earthy, uh, woodland, kind of garlic, tarragon and uh, rosemary. So I don't want chilli. I really don't want cheese. Cheese would also be a bit annoying. Cheese would be very annoying for me. <laughs> okay. And that giggle says everything. Great. <laughs> so I'm chopping up some horseradish. Haven't worked out why yet. Three, two, one. Next ingredient. You absolute melon. Crumpet. Everyone loves a bit of crumpet. I should not have put a carb into my repertoire. No, I was just <laughs> saying that. I was just thinking, with Sal Sophia and cauliflower, I don't need carbohydrate, even though you've got polenta. I should have given you that polenta. I don't need it. What on earth are we going to do with a crumpet? You guys are both sounding a lot less confident now. Well, you know, you have a plan and then it goes out the window. How long, how long in total left? One more round after this and you have four more minutes in this round. That's bubbling and reducing. My Sal Sophie can come out now. It's going to test my Sal Sophie. I want a slight bite to it, but if it's undercooked, it's really farty. My brown butter, collie and rosemary and garlic is bubbling away. I'm going to puree that with whatever comes in my next ingredient. Chef, do you want anything with this microwave? Yeah, I need the herbs Could out of it, please. Could you push go? Yeah. There's some wilted herbs here. Oh, okay. okay. Semi-dehydrated herbs. So, Ebers, walk us through the flavours you've got now. Okay, um, what is better than uh, crumpet? Buttered crumpet. Lovely. What's better than buttered crumpet? Garlic buttered crumpet. Delicious. So that becomes very simply the base to uh, cauliflower, woodland salsify, like a mushroom red wine sauce, uh, and our seared peppered venison. Very classical. The tofu is going in to thicken my colleague. Beautiful. Curate. And what's the perfect ingredient to finish it all off? Um, I would take some any form of dairy or one flavour that takes my cauliflower puree to a place it's currently not. I'm hoping that whatever it is, I can blend with cauliflower. It's basically. That's what I'm hoping. Okay. Another Wait. protein would be fun. <laughs> no, we do not need any more protein. <laughs> so I've made a avocado, coriander, uh, polenta puree, like a bit of a schmush. Right. Three, two, one. Next ingredient. What is it? Fantastic. I oh, love this. I don't. You, yes, but not with what I'm doing. <laughs> with what I'm doing. <laughs> it's amazing. Need, I don't need citrus anywhere near what I'm doing. Yes. <laughs> I've got acidity from red wine. I've got horseradish. I don't want that. Get out of jail free. Oh, looks like I'm going to do a venison tartare with a pomelo vinaigrette with an avocado crema, some toasted little bits of uh, crumpet, some dashi style pickles. Oh, uh, what are they? Was that your plan all along? Yeah, of course. Oh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ebers, right, you've got a hint of tofu in yours. Please tell me you're having slightly more than a hint of pomelo. We'll see. <laughs> So you're squeezing your pomelo into that? No. Oh. I'm going to dress it at the end. If I squeeze the pomelo in there, it would cure it and cook it. I'm going with a bit of soy, a bit of fish sauce, because fish sauce, lime. Uh, can I have a hot red chilli out of the bottom uh, drawer of the fridge, please? Uh, pickled ginger will go through it. That'll add a lovely little punch and blend all the flavours together. Some togarashi will go over the top of it. Chef, did you use all that cream I gave you? Nope. It is near Barry. Excellent. I'm going to... might need it. I'm going to... 
basically blend our cooked cauliflower uh, with the tofu, with the tarragon, with the horseradish, and with some dairy. He's, oh! Cheeky little blend under the nest. Cheeky little blend under the bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so everything is coming together. I've just got to get on a plate in how long? Uh, one and a half minutes. No. Yes. Well, this is going to have to do. <laughs> okay, you're into your final minute. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> that does not taste like one or two, but hey, <laughs> it is going on the dish. That's like absolute dog food. Where do I have <laughs> He's, what, what are you doing, Gush? I literally forced them earlier. He's tasting again! What did I do with all the fresh herbs from earlier? What do you mean? The coriander and the parsley. I put them in my avocado paste. All of them? Thank you. Yeah. Most, most of them. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one! Step away from whatever you've just made. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed watching the chefs stressed. Should we uh, put these in the sexes? Straight away, probably one of the hardest challenges I think we've ever done. Fun? Fun. Yeah, fun. Fun. But you were both sweating My hard. My goodness, does five minutes go quick? Yeah. The last five minutes is the worst five minutes. Should we try them? Yeah, yeah. See, when you when mm. I taste avocado like that, I instantly think lime. Mm. But with pomelo, that's really lovely. It works, yeah. South salsify. Yeah. I want to crunch. Oh no, get it. Because it needs yeah tanging. Nice. The apple pickle. Yeah, Ben pulled out really fancy apple cider vinegar and left it near me, so I, that went in. And I think quite a wise choice in the time mm. to not cook the venison. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right at the start, you said caramelised onions go with everything. They're it, in there. It does go with it. They're in there. <laughs> That's the sweetness you get to offset the, um, the pomelo and, mm. the, and yeah. the slight mm. heat. It feels like this game is mostly about risk yeah. and gambling. At what point do you feel like you went in the wrong direction. Putting uh, polenta to cook. Really? Yeah. Early on. It made perfect sense with venison. Mm. It's a fantastic base, but it does cut you off in terms of the, the world, maybe Europe and the Americas. Okay. And at what point do you feel like you got the gamble right? Uh, the, as soon as the tofu came out, that pushed me straight to Southeast Asia. Yeah. And that went tartar or tataki, and I both said those words, so that's in my head. Okay, gotcha. So seared yeah, yeah. or raw venison. And therefore the polenta was wrong, but what you've done is kind of turn it into Smart. like a, a really herby kind of thing that pushes it back towards there. It's not quite right, but it's kind of like yeah. trying to save mm. that mm. that slip up mistake. Because I made a very similar mistake and then got pomelo. Let's eat it. Ooh. Super earthy. Tarragon. Whoa! Mm. Yeah. Mm. Did not expect tarragon in there. So my whole dish was supposed to be woodland. And when I committed to that early on, with mushroom, salsify, tarragon, thyme, mm. rosemary, I was stuck when the citrus came in last minute, and that's the curveball. I thought, you know, a cherry or a, a oh. blackcurrant <laughs> thing is good, but this is too much. Mm. But well, well. Uh, mm. if you'd finally dice that up, and stir it through your sauce. Yeah, mm. game changer. Mm. Yeah, but it's too much. Of it. One piece of it's quite. A... Mm. And I try to, mm. I try to microwave it quickly in the five minutes, and then candy it. It's too much. I can see where it's. Perfume I can see what it's trying to do. It's done a bergamot, hasn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's done, it's done a bergamot. It feels incredibly well put together. Right. Honestly, as a dish, if I didn't have to put the pomelo yeah. on at the end, yeah. I'd have been really chuffed because I. Called myself into mm. woodland vibes. You committed early. I didn't blend the cauliflower puree because I knew whatever that fifth ingredient yeah. I could blend into it. If it was a condiment or a spice or a cheese or something, I wasn't expecting citrus. 
That's where my curveball went, oh dear. <laughs> I've been bergamotted. I've been bergamotted. <laughs> well, tell us what you guys thought. How did these chefs both do? Comment down below. What would you have done with these mystery ingredients? And if you want to see more of these, then make sure you like this video. I want to see more of these. I think I that want to see more of these. That was good fun, really good fun. Challenge, but good yeah. fun. I love a challenge.